Hey guys, the architect here, back with another episode of Every Revit Tool. Alright, after we just introduced the Revit button, the top left corner, and now we're at the basic dialog screen when you open Revit. And just to begin, we'll start a new project, and we're going to use the architecture template just just to keep things as basic as possible. We're going to create a new project, not a project template. That might be something we get in a little later. Hit OK. Defaults are going to load up. Um, starting at the top, the architecture tab. Everything that is 3D that you need to build, change, that has to do with actual building models. Structure, this is kind of self-explanatory, but used more by structural engineers, but this will give you physical structure that will appear in the model. Systems, more MEP related, but same idea, these are physical items that will show up in the 3D model. Insert, really anything that can be inserted into Revit and be found here, whether it's a, a CAD file, just an image, you name it. Linking another CAD file, of course. Annotation, this whole tab is related to 2D objects, so there's a big distinction between 3D and 2D in Revit, so everything 2D will be found in here. An analyze tab. I unfortunately don't really have the opportunity to use a lot of these very often, although we'll get to these. Um, it's just, you know, analysis, energy, sun, you know, loads, whatnot, massing and site. If you're building a topography or uh, populating site components or having to do it with masses, massing is, it's very powerful, but I would think underused, but we'll get to that as well. Uh, collaborate. This tab has everything to do with how your model is saved, viewed, opened, and coordinated between you and other people on, on your team working on the same project files. Uh, the view. This has everything to do with what you're seeing and creating new views, creating new sheets, switching between windows and whatnot manage this is has everything to do with the project standards whether it's transferring project standards from another project or adding new materials or um, developing parameters or u project units based on this project add-ins this is where third-party applications you download for Revit are going to populate site designer a fairly new uh, set of tools but very powerful now they have to do with showing actual site. The modify tab, I would say this is uh, the most used tab because this is these are all the tools that you will need to use in in addition to every other tab. They they basically affect everything. And these probably look familiar from AutoCAD if you're familiar with that. Alright, and this is the work work plane. The, it's it's all it is is a window, and as you see, it actually move it around, minimize it, change the size. Um, these this is considered a child window within Revit, and a lot of people have multi monitor setups. And if you wanted to, to extend this to another monitor, you'd have to actually drag the edge of Revit and then drag this parent. Or, excuse me, the, the parent window is Revit and the child window is all of the views in Revit. So if you were to extend Revit to another monitor simply by pushing and pulling the side of the application, you'd then be able to extend these child windows to another monitor as well. But for the case of this, we'll, uh, we'll maximize that. You can also minimize them and they'll show up down here. Um, to the left, you've got the Properties tab, and this is this has everything to do with what is selected. Right now, nothing's selected, so it's just telling us about the view, the floor plan, and this is a floor plan view by default, and just tells you everything involved with what has to do with the floor plan. We'll get into this a little more later. This is the project browser down here. This shows every view that you have in the project and categorizes it by type can extend your families. The families are basically every piece of model that is loaded into the project, whether you see it or not, it's it's loaded and be and able to use. 
Um, and what's nice is that these windows are free to move around. You can dock them anywhere. I see sometimes where people set these up on each side. So you have one nice space in the middle to work with with a browser and properties on each side. But I tend to just kind of keep things defaulted and uh, snap them to the side here. It can be kind of finicky to play with as things can get jumbled around. But um, this is another problem of mine. If you can actually close all these windows, and I tell you what, if you're a beginner, you you will be completely lost. <laughs> um, but if this were to happen, it's very simple to get all these back. Go into the View tab. Again, everything having to do with View. The User Interface button is here, and we can check whatever we want to see. And right now, the project browser is not currently checked because we closed it. We're going to open that again. We'll see that it populates in the same place that it was. Same thing with properties. We're going to get the properties back. And see, this is a, this is a basic list of what you could see at any time. I, I generally keep it just like this. Um, but as far as navigating goes, um, I, I try and do as much as I can with the mouse as possible because I'm a, later down the line hotkeys for shortcuts are going to save you so much time and doing that with your left hand on the keyboard is really the way to go as far as time goes. So uh, basic things as far as navigating and scrolling the, the mouse wheel in and out will obviously zoom in and out. Um, if we were to say we wanted to select this elevation tag, it's actually an elevation tag, and you can see that these are populated by default looking towards the center here, so you'll actually have um, these elevations automatically populated once your model is here. You'll actually be able to see the model in those, I mean, they are already populated, but let's say we're going to select this, and if you select it, yeah, you'll, you'll see the properties, and uh, depending on what type, you can change it to an interior, or just the whole building elevation and that will be reflected down here depending on the properties that you change but um, similar to AutoCAD swiping completely left grabs everything that the selection touches the selection tool touches you see we grab the triangle as soon as it touches and again grabbing the square as soon as the selection tool grabs that um, but swiping left from the left uh, swipes nothing until you completely select that object. So at that moment when we select that entire square, when our selection is completely around the square, it is selected. So uh, again, basics. Um, let's say you know our model's way across the screen. We have no idea where it is. You know, somehow we've found ourselves way out here. Um, you're if you're from AutoCAD and you're very familiar with zoom extents and I'm a very big fan of that but I'm more of a fan of it in Revit because it's so simple simply double tapping the middle mouse button or the scroll wheel on most mice will zoom extents it's fantastic so I can quickly zoom in here zoom extents really quickly pan if you wanted to pan you're going to just simply hold that middle mouse button down and move and pan around the screen. So it, it, finding that you can do a lot of navigation with just the mouse, and especially a lot with even just the mouse wheel. Um, so I'm going to go to a 3D view. This is actually currently a 2D view. I'm going to go to a 3D view real quick. By going up here to the the house, which simply creates a 3D view. And you can see that's populated down here in the 3D views. Um, and you'll know you're in a 3D view when you see this view cube. And you can actually select different sides of the cube to rotate everything, and, and uh, it'll tell you exactly what side that is. You can quickly go to the top view. Um, you can hit this home button, and that will take you to the what the default is, the default saved option for this view. And you can actually change that. So you you got to this point and you wanted to save this, you could actually save this view or better yet save current view as home and so whenever you hit that home button if we say we're way over here when it comes to navigating around the building, we're going to hit that home button and we're going to 
end up home again. This is, we could have saved that as the home view. Now there's there's nothing modeled here, so there's nothing to see, but there's everything to see in the cube because the cube will, will reflect where you are and what you're seeing in the relationship to the building. So continuously looking at the cube. Um, th these options here, navigation wheel, I I don't tend to use them so much. They seem to be a bit more than you know, I, I want to deal with I, because I can essentially do all of this on the mouse. You know, I just kind of went through all these. Um, so I think the last thing, big thing, is to orbit, um, and that's that's very simple. Just like we pan by holding the middle mouse button in, we can hold shift and press the mouse middle button and pan around. And now, as you look at the cube, we're orbiting. So I'm going to quickly put a couple of walls in here. Go back to my first floor. I'm going to go to the architecture tab, wall, and I'm just going to draw four walls in here. And now I'm going to go back to that 3D view, and we're going to go over some of those navigational tools. All right, again, so I'm I'm way off the middle of nowhere. Uh, if I double tap the middle mouse button, I'm going to zoom extents. Holding shift down while holding the middle mouse button orbits around. I can hit that home button, and this is actually where the home view is saved. The set as home. All right, zoom extents again, and once you get a lot going in the model. Say let let's get this kind of ridiculous. I'm gonna I'm gonna drag this way out here just so you'll see what happens when I start to orbit. When I start to orbit around, it it, it gets kind of wacky because it, it's it, it's getting so big, it's covering the screen beyond the screen, and so there's not a good way to deal with that. Although the second you select something, what you orbit around is your selection. So I'm going to I'm going to actually zoom in a lot here. And if I'm not selecting anything, you see that th this orbit gets kind of ridiculous and almost unhelpful. But, but the second I I select this wall, I am simply orbiting around this wall, which it's fantastic when you've got so much in in view yet you want to orbit around just one object. So that's kind of the basic setup for navigating and as well as the the UI of Revit 2017. Uh, th there are a lot more little tools and things I'll get into and that I'll touch on as I begin to introduce new tools but as as the basics being able to navigate around and know what what each window in the view is and has to do with one another is very important so I'm I hope I covered all of that and if not please please leave a comment but either way still looking for those comments and Really appreciate all the, the comments and the views and everything. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next one.